Fairfield Federal, in cooperation with Interface Video, presents the Lancaster Festival, live from downtown Lancaster. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan makes it easy to take control of your personal finances and build your wealth. You can access your accounts 24-7 with online banking, bill paying, and debit MasterCard. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan. Checking, savings, and home loans. Online and on the go. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Also brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Walker Shoe Center, Buckeye Lake Marina, South Central Power, the Fairfield County Parks, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, Dagger Johnston, Miller Ogilvy and Hampson, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Ohio University Lancaster, The Frame Shop, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Welcome to Lancaster Festival Live. I'm your host, Paul Jackson. Thank you Federal for joining us. We are downtown, video as we say, at Lancaster, Lancaster Festival, Festival Live each day this week. Monday through Friday, we're down here bringing you uh, kind of what's going on on the scene with the Lancaster Festival. Interesting guests, related businesses to the festival. We're having a, a great time down here. And, uh, and today, weather-wise, the perfect one. And for those of you who were here yesterday, I was talking to Gary Sheldon. He did make me the official weatherman for the Lancaster Festival because I said it was going to be nice the rest of the week and here we are certainly the best day in July maybe the best day of the year today it's it's comfortable out it's low humidity there's a nice breeze and the nostalgics are across the street we'll hear from them a little bit later in the show so it's just a an amazing day to be downtown so I'd invite you still to come down and see what's going on and then we'll talk about later in the day and then tomorrow uh, at the end of the show some of the other events will be going on today but weather won't be a hold up for anybody today so we say we like to talk to a, a lot of local businesses who are related to the festival and one of them we like to have on each and every year is uh is fair hope hospice and uh, the pickering house everybody involved in that and this year we're, we're fortunate enough to have a rose between two thorns we have ricky chenault with us that would be the rose that's ricky and and the thorns are me and Rick Schneider on the end. What, would you agree with that, Rick? Well, I like to be the leaf. You know, you could be the thorn, I'll be the leaf. So I'm kind of uh, sh shady, if you know what I'm saying. It'd be nice if he would leaf. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be all for that, Ricky. I that's, don't know. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, you guys keep it up. So we've got Rick Schneider, Ricky Chanel. Ricky is the development director for uh, Fairhope Possum. We'll explain that in a little bit. And of course, Rick is the community educator, and we'll explain more about that. But first of all, welcome down here, and again, we held out the perfect day for you to be here. Absolutely, I mean, this weather is marvelous and it looks like it's gonna be the way, that way for the rest of the festival. Very good. So, well, yes. That, that's why Gary made me the, the head weatherman, I understand that. So anyway, uh, we were talking about uh, development director and what that means and one of the things you talked about, and I think Rick can chime in on that too to start, is down in the mid-off building, you have a display going on down there that's, I guess, set up for, to show what donors can possibly do if they want to get involved. And, and, it, and if you want to perhaps be in that mode with Fairhope Hospice, how that would work. Well, yes, we have an art exhibit down at the Midoff. Um, two artists, Joyce Fisher and Barbara Carruthers, and beautiful artwork. And what the way that worked is called it's what we call a donor initiated fundraiser, where a donor will call us and say, "Hey, we have this idea to do a fundraiser on your behalf, and what do you think?" And then we can help them out with it like we did here. We supplied some, um, some volunteers. We were there for the opening. But then a lot of, then they donate proceeds back to us. So, um, yeah, this happens fairly often with Fairhope. And, you know, you and I have talked before, and I've done fundraising in other areas, and I have never had it happen like it does with us. It's genuine, and, and Rick, we've talked about it enough that I, I guess I think of this similar to things we talk about. If there is a need for something at Fairhope Hospice, you folks find a way to get it done. Somebody comes up with an idea I want to give here, I want to raise money here, it's done. Absolutely. Two groups come to mind, the River Valley Rod and Customs. They put it on a car show for us, and Dr. Payne and DD, we split the funds. It's on Labor Day. And then a couple, and now Ernie Cook, just an individual, has put on a poker run for us for probably, I think, 10 or 12 years now. 
and their name is on our donor book. They've given over forty thousand dollars just from having poker runs. And we had, they had family on hospice, and they were so overwhelmed with what we did, they want to say thank you. And you know, with the Bitoff building we're talking about, it's interesting. There, so many people come up to say thank you to us. It's a very good avenue for them to come in. They don't know who to say thanks to in particular, and they talk to our staff. It, it's a great place to be. Ricky, we, we were talking, and you, you hit on that a little bit there, development director. And again, you've done this. You've fundraised for nonprofits before. You understand the game. But it's a little different here where I think your job, perhaps at other nonprofits, was to go out, seek donors, find people who want to give, then try to pry that money away a little bit, try to see why it's good to give to your nonprofit. But I think with Fairhope Hospice, I think there's just a different mindset. You know, it is different. I've, as you said, I've done fundraising like this, um, but I've never worked in a place where so many people walk in and bring me money. And the reason they do that is because they see the need, they are moved by our staff, inspired by what we do, and want to give back, want to pay it forward for the next person who comes in because you know no one ever gets a bill from Fairhope and in order for us to do that those donations play a vital role do you, do you uh, just a second Rick, let me I, well I, I'll lose this on my mind if I don't think about it do the people that come to you with these ideas do you find they're mostly people who have used the services of the Pickering House or Fairhope Hospice or they're just people perhaps word of mouth or heard about it and think this is something that's worthy you know, it's a little bit of both. We have fundraiser. We have people who have um, experienced our service, and definitely they give us a call. But then I've also had people who, uh, as you said, have heard from word of mouth. A friend or someone says that's a really good place. And yeah, again, you can come and see where your dollars are being spent. I mean, it's direct patient care. It's you know music therapy. It is grief support. Um, you know, we don't get reimbursed for any of the grief support we offer, and yet we're in schools and we're offering this not only to our patients and their families, but to anyone in our communities who need that kind of a service. It's there for them. You know, when Ricky was talking about people come to her, we were having a, uh, we built the AMT center, a grief center, kind of away from the Pickering House, so people, it would be easy access for them. And we were looking for sponsors for different areas as a way to pay off the mortgage. And the front foyer, uh, they asked me, I knew a businessman, do you think you could ask him to see if he'd help donate? And I couldn't even sell Boy Scout cookies door to door. Well, girl, well, never mind, we'll get into that later. But I couldn't sell anything door to door as a kid. I couldn't sell anything. I went into his lobby and said, hey, you know, we're having a, uh, we need sponsorships. And he goes, well, how much? And I said, well, we're, the target was 20000 for the uh, foyer and all that. He said, well, I can have the, it was in November. He said, I can have the check at the first of the year. I don't have it right now. I go, okay, you know, just that easy. Because he had experienced Fair Hope as well. He knew that the money is well spent. He knew it was a good car, so it's not wasted. And he wanted to say thank you. And as a development director, that's unusual. It, it is unusual, but... When people find out what I do, you know, one of the first things they'll say is, oh, I can never ask anybody for money, just like, just like Rick just said. But when it's a mission that you believe in and you share that with them, then it's not really, you're convincing them they can make a difference and then you just show them how. And, you know, it, 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 this is one of the best gigs in town, let me tell you. Uh, Rick, you, you deal a lot with community outreach, with the volunteers, with things that go on up there. That's really your bailiwick. Uh, always a busy time up there, uh, educating the, the staff, uh, new people coming in. There, there's no end to the things that you and your staff do. No, it, it's always the new day. Somebody comes up with a new idea. And, you know, I uh, kind of change the subject here. I do the cable TV show, and one lady loves watching us, and she always asks me to somehow say hi and let her know that she's watching. So Carol Burnett, when she ended the show, it always tug her left ear. And the woman was right here. She was, <laughs> I was going to tug my hair at the end. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, hey. But there's always something going on, something new. And many of our staff also start out as volunteers. Fundraising ideas come from volunteers. And when I speak to church groups and different things like that, they want to just donate after listening to me speak. You know, and so it, it really does come from every source you can imagine. 
you know, like I said, the motorcycle folks and the rod and custom, but we've had golf outings. People do that quite often, you know, and I, I'm, I can remember for years I'd be called to go pick up Pine Hill or somebody else. They have a check for me, you know, and it was, uh, it's just satisfying to know that people understand. And well, I Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you know, give you an example of, of really how um, engaged our, not only our donors, but our staff. Last year we did our first um, employee campaign, annual campaign. We had 65% giving from our staff, which is amazing. And when we asked them what they wanted to support, because we gave them a little bit of, of um, in, input on this. and. They wanted to start what we're now calling the Fairhope Family Fund because what they were seeing were families would come in and they might need a gas card to go back and forth. They might need um, a, lot of that. a lot of that. And they wanted to be able to help the families as well as our patients. And so they started the Fairhope Family Fund. And the other day we used, um, we used some of it because we had a patient who wanted to go visit a family member one more time. So we nice. gave them gas cards and uh, gift cards to some, some restaurants so they could go do that. That's because of our employees. So I mean, how they are so engaged and they believe in what we do. You know, Paul, years ago we had a family and they were being evicted near Christmas. It's a long story, but the staff found out and we did everything we could to get the phone reconnected and all that. And they took up a collection and they bought a lot of gift cards. And I saw the husband later and he said the best thing you ever did was give us gift cards because it allowed us to buy Christmas gifts. We didn't just take a big wheel and pass it on or something and pass it on. And the gift cards are so important and our staff is aware of that. They didn't, you know... They knew the gift cards really are flexible and let somebody else actually get the benefit of buying it. And, and I know that story is repeated over and over again. You hear that a hundred times a year. I'm sure you hear that. And one of the things, Rick, Ricky uh, hit on this a second ago, nobody ever receives a bill for services and, and whatever that is, no matter the length of time, they're there. They, they never receive a bill. So one of the things that I hear from people who aren't as perhaps well versed on picking houses, what's the catch? That's what I hear every time I speak to a group that I don't believe that. And it, we even go as far as we'll buy them donuts if they want. We'll go to Dairy Queen and buy them a dilly bar if we want, and we don't charge them even for that. We can bring in fair food. We pay for admission to get in and bring the fair food back. What we do is we get money from Medicare on a per day basis. So we're actually paid for every day somebody's on service our incentive is to have them live longer. People think that you shorten your life on Fairhope service, actually lengthen it. We get it from insurance money for their insurance policies. And like Ricky had said, all of the uh, donation sources. So we use the money very wisely, but we do not invoice. In fact, we do palliative care, which most hospices charge, even at a reduced rate, but you're not reimbursed anywhere for palliative we do it for free again as a service and that's why the money and the donations are so important it allows us to do everything we do for free in fact we're Ricky and I are doing this for free right now well we get what we pay for oh, okay. tell you that Ricky we got about a minute left uh, again down at the mid-off tell us what's down there and how can people find out more how would they contact you or or perhaps anybody on the staff well, they can go to our website, and if they want to talk with us, go to our website at www.fairhopehospice.org. You can find any of us on there. And if they want to go down and see the exhibit, it's open from, well, it's actually open from eight or 9 to 5 every day. The, the doors are open. Is this just a festival? Yes. Okay. Yes, during the festival. And we actually have a volunteer there every day from 12 to 4. So if they want to come in, share their story. Um, Tell them, come on in, come on down, Very we're good. there. Very good. Yeah, I'll be there from 12 to 4 tomorrow, and it, it's just so satisfying to listen to people. The stories they have to, they want to tell, and sometimes it happened 20 years ago, and it sounds like it happened this morning. You know, they're so enthralled with what we do. It's just great. 
Well, I want to thank Rick Schneider and Ricky Schnall. Thank you both for joining us. It's always a joy to talk about hospice. It's a subject I feel very close to, and thankfully I've never had to use the services, but I know they are there should I ever need them. And uh, great people like you out there, and it's replicated over and over again with the fine staff you up there. Give, please give Denise Bauer our best. We appreciate all you guys doing in Lancaster and Fairfield County. Thank you. Thank you. Last night, it's Hot Tonic Orchestra, a little smooth jazz entertaining at the KSC. In case you missed it, here's a selection. All right, and we'd like to thank the folks at Buckeye Lake Marina for bringing us that highlight, nice smooth jazz sound there. You're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat. Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. Learn more at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. We'll be right back. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations. 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to the Lancaster Smith Festival Funeral Live. Home I'm home Paul Jasen. Pleasure to have you with us. Kind of in the background, and maybe you can hear it too. We're listening to the good sounds of the nostalgics, one of the real fine noon entertainment uh, sources we have. Just Caddy Cora from us over here. They just do such a such a great job and again it's a fabulous day and I think the rest of the week is going to be equally nice here at the Lancaster Festival so we're just looking forward to a, just a fun week headed toward the the Saturday big climax with Kansas out there we'll be talking with that uh, more I think we have Deb Connell on tomorrow the executive director we'll talk to her more about that I want to have a fellow on here I don't think I've had him on before Mark Owen with South Central Power am I close that's correct thank All you right. for having me Paul very good well we appreciate being on and I could officially say that South Central Power is my favorite power company because that's where I send my checks every month. Well, we appreciate that, and we appreciate all of our members. Uh, 
uh, it is owned by you and, and the other uh, customers that we serve. So we're very proud to be a co-op and very proud to be providing electricity in and around Lancaster and Fairfield County and, and 23 other counties across central and southern Ohio for, for more than 80 years now. And I, and I, again, I would give an unsolicited plug. I'm like everybody else, things happen. Lines stop working, your power goes down, maybe it's a storm, maybe it's something else related, who would know a squirrel bit through the line. And I've had to call them on occasion, or at least call in and say we're out of power. And um, sometimes when it's, I live on kind of a rural spot, maybe just a couple of us, but they're right out there. I mean, they get on it right now. And then when there's a bigger one, I know they're working on it and they give you, you've got the nice little phone system now where you can call in. So I appreciate that. They give you an estimated time, they call you back, your power should be on. I mean, it, uh, it's really been ramped up the last few years. Well, thank you. We're, we're very proud of uh, our, our line workers and the response that they provide. Uh, we've had certainly our share of storms this summer, uh, and they're out working in, in the rain and the heat uh, 24 hours a day to restore power as quickly and safely as possible. So uh, we appreciate you saying that. Uh, we do uh, take pride in giving people the opportunity to report outages, whether it's over the phone, uh, using an, our automated system. We have a new app that you can download and, and use to report power outages. And of course, you can also report by text. Uh, if you want to sign up for any of those services, that information is available on our website, southcentralpower.com. But we do uh, certainly appreciate you, you shouting out to our linemen uh, who do just a fantastic job year round. And I use the text and the app too, so then they're great. Another thing I received in the mail, and I think it was just maybe this week, maybe it was last week, the big annual meeting's coming up. That's right, annual meeting is a South Central Power tradition. Again, it's another way that our members can participate in the business uh, because they own the business. And uh, that meeting is going to be August 15th. It's going to be at the campus of Ohio University Lancaster. Uh, it'll be the second year in a row we've had it there. Uh, and it turned out to be a great venue for us last year. So we're, we're very excited to be doing that again. Uh, so you can RSVP on our website, southcentralpower.com. You can give us a call at any of our offices. If you're a South Central Power member, customer, you want to attend, we'd love to have you there. Uh, it's a great business meeting, great chance for you to hear directly from your elected trustees and from uh, the, the executives of the organization about what's going on with the co-op. Uh, Registration is going to be starting at, at 10 a.m. Mark Owens with us from South Central Power. And uh, we think about that big annual meeting come up, and that goes on every year. And, and like you say, in the last couple of years, forever in a day, it was out at the fairgrounds, and that's where it always was. Now it's gone out to Ohio University, and I would say just in that first year, as you indicated, that's a good venue for you folks. It really is a nice venue. Uh, we certainly appreciated the opportunity to be at the fairgrounds for so many years, and we do still host uh, a, uh, an event there once a year, uh, uh, generally in the spring. So uh, members that want to come out and see us at the fairgrounds, uh, we, we encourage you to do that. But we moved the annual meeting to Ohio University Lancaster starting last year because it's a great, uh, they have a great indoor space for us as well. So it's, it's a great, great place to have the meeting. Another, I, I would think if we get a chance, I want to talk a little bit about the solar things you have going on. But one of the things that you've branched out in the last few years, it's been several years now, is, is your security system. That's turned out to be a, a big asset in the South Central family. That's right, we do have a security division. We actually have a great promotion going on right now throughout the month of July. Uh, you can give us a call if you're interested in home security or if you have a security system already with South Central Power, maybe you're interested in an upgrade, uh, we can certainly help you with either of those things. We have some special pricing going on throughout the month of July. And uh, maybe just about a minute left, but uh, big talk now out in the uh, Rock Mill area, the solar deal is going on with South Central Power. That seems to be something of the future that you're looking at. Right, we have a great solar facility out there. Um, we're actually building a new uh, campus uh, for all of our employees in Central Ohio to work right next to where that is, but we have solar power available uh, for our members. If you're interested in learning more about that, again, give us a call or visit our website, southcentralpower.com. Well, we appreciate you being with us. Uh, again, it's my favorite power company. I know that, I guarantee you that. But thanks for all you do for the community. You're a great partner in the community. South Central folks live here, they work here, they play here. Uh, we enjoy just having you guys. And, and I only live about a mile from where the office is right now, so it's, it's convenient for me. But if you move out there, best of luck, because I know it'll be a, an upgrade, and we think South Central's doing a great job. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having us. Sure, thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. At Dagger Law, we have more than 110 years of combined expertise in nearly every part of law. What I think sets us apart from any other law firm is 
our ability to work together. With us, you're getting a trusted partner, in addition to a team who can help you with a growing business, changing family, planning your future, or dealing with land issues. It's a challenge every day, and you meet an awful lot of nice people. Your case matters. We'll take the time and the energy um, to ensure that you have a quality experience, quality representation. Whatever you need, we have a lawyer who can help. Dagger Law. Local. Trusted. Experienced. It's beautiful out. Uh, we're in this beautiful, beautiful personal touch party tent down here. Where we're nice and shaded, but it's a it's a lovely day out. The humidity's down. Temperatures are comfortable. And again, we think uh, much of the week, if not all the week, will be like this. Is so uh, maybe the bad weather, whatever that was, was behind us. We hope that's the case. You can hear a little bit of the background of the nostalgics there. The uh, downtown entertainment today. Let's hear a little bit of them from earlier. How great is it to hear the nostalgic? They do such a wonderful job. They're the entertainment down here today at the bandstand. And that clip, we remind you, was brought to you by our friends at Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events. They realize that you rely on them for making your event successful. They're family owned and have been there for over 30 years of combined experience in the event rental industry. You can check them out on the Personal Touch Party at personaltouchparty.com. I was just grabbing a bite to eat before I came over today to do the show. We go on the air about noon every day, and I was just over uh, getting something to eat, and I noticed a poster in the corner for Destination Downtown Lancaster, and the, the four little hot buttons on it were shop, eat, play, and relax. And if ever I heard of a definition of our next guest, I've hit it right on the head. She is the executive director of Destination Downtown Lancaster, Miss Shop, Eat, Play, and Relax, Amanda Everett. They're my favorite things to do, <laughs> to shop, to eat, to play, and relax. Not necessarily in that order, though. And yeah. You have the job for that. I do. I do. I get to uh, celebrate our wonderful community in the heart of our city every day. It doesn't get much better than that. And isn't it nice of them to once a year throw this party for you and Destination Downtown, <laughs> where the entire emphasis for the week is downtown. It's really, um, uh, it's really a special time of year. Deb Connell, the executive director of the Lancaster Festival, and I uh, 
love to talk about. You know, we, we get very excited about this time of year because it is, it's a, it's a great time of year to be downtown. There's so much going on. You know, we just had our wonderful Art Walk, um, which is Destination Downtown Lancaster's largest event. Uh, we had almost 10,000 people in attendance, um, over 40 artists in 30 different, over 30 different locations. Um, we're a rich arts community and it's all happening down here. We've got music every day at the bandstand. Um, all of our businesses are, are getting in on the action, hosting these wonderful works of art. It's, it's a time to be really proud to be a Lancastrian, I think. And, and your job every day is to promote what we were just talking about, the things that go on down here. You talked about things that are just special to the festival, and that's true. But every day, your job is to go out and promote this. Does it change a little bit when the festival's on? Are there, does it amp your job up a little bit? Because so much emphasis is on that. Do you... Do you have any legwork to do before that to get downtown ready for this? Well, absolutely. Um, and again, uh, the Art Walk is the biggest thing. And a lot of people think that the Art Walk is, is a Lancaster Festival event. But that's actually a destination downtown Lancaster event. So that is our largest event of the year. And it sort of kicks off the festival. Um, so we work in collaboration time-wise with that. So that is how we're ramping up. And then obviously, we organize all of the, um, the wonderful food trucks that are here. So there's a lot of work that, that happens to make sure that people are ready and then we work with those businesses to let them know, um, uh, you know what to expect, especially those newer businesses that are coming in. We're so lucky this year that we have some, some brand new shops that are opening and we wanna, we wanna make sure that they're prepared for all of the throngs of people that are gonna be downtown. So, so many of them have extended hours this time of year um, uh, and so that's just a little bit of what we do downtown. And, and is that pretty much what your job would be this week? Uh, we'll move this week now, and we're into the big week, full week of the festival. Things go on down here. Uh, things are happening. Your job, the visitor center, uh, the festival office, everybody's working in concert together to, to put on the best foot forward for Lancaster. So do you just go around and look at businesses, just talk to them, say, how's it going? Everything good? Can we help you? Anything we can do? Is that, is that kind of your job? If there are any fires, and we hope there are not, if there are any, you put them out? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's really the same thing that it is that it is all the time, but it's just ramped up because we have, you know, extra people uh, down here during this time of year. Um, but but that's a lot of what we do is, is just helping uh, be a resource to those businesses, to those restaurants, um, uh, to the bars. You know, we have the wonderful open refreshment area right now, which is a great economic driver for the downtown. Um, and that means that you can go into any uh, restaurant or bar um, and uh, ask for your beverage in an approved uh, open refreshment area cup. It's this great little little plastic cup that says we're downtown on it. And you can walk around the district. So you can walk around and, and, and do your window shopping and have a beer in, in Fountain Square. Um, I saw, are you drinking a beer right now, Paul? <laughs> Well, well you, but you could, but I you could, could and I that's could. the point. That's the point, point. Um, and it's wonderful. So we sort of manage that, um, make sure that all of our bars and restaurants understand the rules around that, um, that have the pr appropriate supplies. Make sure that everyone's communicating with one another. We are a downtown family, so so we're 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 kind of like mom and dad of the downtown family. We make sure that everybody knows what's going on, and we're all on the same page. Very good. And, and this is a story I suspect you've heard more than once. I was talking to the boys that own the well, and I talked to them, I think, I don't know, it was last week, Thursday or Friday, whatever it was, and they talked about the busiest, almost the busiest they'd ever had down there. And I'm sure you hear that story this week again and again. No matter how busy a business is, get ready for this. Oh, yeah. Th this is... Um the, the busiest time of year for our downtown businesses. And what we're seeing, and I think what's even more exciting, is that we just keep climbing um, uh, upwards with those numbers. Um, so every festival, it's a little bit more. Every Wands and Wizards, you know, there's always something happening downtown. This is the largest thing that we have, but, but as of late, we're adding in so many other things. Um, and the Lancaster Festival works with us on those things, as well as visit Fairfield County, and it's just, it is. It's a great time to be in Lancaster. You'd be hard pressed to find uh, to, to not find anything to do on any given day of the week. Yeah. And and I understand. I've heard rumors that there is life after the festival. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that because we've talked about this for months. It's coming. It's weeks away. It's days away. Now it's here. So after this, I imagine you can let your hair down just a bit. 
but life goes on and you're on to the next event. Where do we go as we move into July, late July and August? Well, I'll tell you what, we, we don't really, this is our busy season and it doesn't end. We don't even catch a breath um, after festival because we have another festival that's coming up. Um, the weekend after that last weekend of festival, the first weekend in August is our Wands and Wizards Festival. Um, yeah, Visit Fairfield County hosted that last year um, in collaboration with us and the Fairfield County Library. And we had no idea how many people that would bring thousands and thousands of people came downtown. It was absolutely incredible. So we're a little more prepared this year. Uh, we're preparing our businesses, but there's great information on Visit Fairfield County's uh, website. Keep watching the Destination Downtown Lancaster website for downtown events. There are classes. Um, you can go make your own fairy garden, magical fairy garden. Uh, buy the kits from Tracy Lynn's collections. Book a class at Keller Market. It's just a great great time. We're also hosting a pub crawl, um, pubs and potions pub crawl uh, uh, during the festival. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're straight into um, the Lancaster Brew Fest. So we'll be shutting down the street here at Broad that's, again. That's really gotten legs. That has really gotten legs. So, so that'll be almost a thousand people again right here in the heart of our city. Um, but there are so many different things happening in different downtown businesses throughout the week before. So it's always something. And then um, new this year on S Sunday, September 22nd, we've partnered with the Fairfield County Foundation to host 250 plates, which is a community farm to table uh, fundraiser. We're going to be, ha uh, we're already selling tickets. They're going fast. So if you haven't got your tickets, hop on Destination Downtown Lancaster's website um, and, and grab them. And then it's going to be a community table, um, 250 seats under the lights in Bank Alley. And all of the downtown businesses will, most of them will be participating, working in conjunction with local farmers and producers. And uh, um, the proceeds will go to Fairfield County Food Pantries, as well as the Keller Market House, which is a nonprofit. Uh, I can remember, I'm with Amanda Everett. Amanda is the executive director of Destination Downtown. And it seems to me it wasn't that long ago, maybe just two or three years ago, maybe three years ago, the mantra was, well, there's no place to eat downtown. You come downtown and everything's closed. You come down over the hill right here, you look down, and it looked like Dodge City, man. There was nothing out there, a vast wasteland. Now, any night you come down, certainly not festival night, but any night you come downtown now, and, and certainly during the festival, it is magical what's happened in just two, three, four years. And that's really a credit to our community. Uh, they decided that they wanted to take their community back and we wanted to own things again. We've got more local ownership um, of our buildings. When you have local ownership, they care about their properties. Um, people want walkability. They want to be able to have those happenstance meetings with their friends and their neighbors and their families um, as they walk around their own city. There's truly a sense of place here um, and, it, and it brings us all together. Well, this is Amanda Everett, Destination Downtown. She is Miss Shop, Eat, Play, and Relax. I get that. I want you to go do that now. I probably didn't have to tell you that. You're going to do some manner of that when you leave this stool right now. But enjoy the rest of the festival. Uh, if you had any fair food, or not fair food, festival food yet? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I cannot say that I have a favorite. I you know, they, they'd be very oh, upset. You're they'd very be PC. Upset. I love it all. Very, she's very PC, <laughs> if nothing else. Amanda, thank you, dear. Thanks so much. Enjoy the festival. Uh, across the street, we had the Nostalgics earlier, and tomorrow is really the big day downtown. On a Wednesday, it's the Lancaster Percussion Ensemble. Wow, they are an amazing group. That will be tomorrow down here. Let's hear a clip from last year just to premise that a little bit.
That is the fabulous Lancaster Percussion Ensemble under the direction of Bruce Gerken. Truly an amazing group. And here's something pretty cool. Again, they'll be down here tomorrow at the bandstand right across the street from us. And they'll have their Wednesday noon concert. It'll be well attended. Bring your chairs. Get here early. It'll be a big crowd. I'm sure everyone knows that. But what you saw was a clip from last May at their annual concert out at Lancaster High School in the auditorium. Interface Video has put that all together. There will be uh, DVDs available of that concert tomorrow at, at the concert. So across the street tomorrow, you'll not only be able to see them as they perform live tomorrow, but you can pick up a copy of the D DVD from the May concert. So all that's available tomorrow, so look forward to that. Let's take a look at the calendar brought to you by Walker Shoe Center, a true sit-down, get-your-feet-measured shoe store located at 737 East Main Street in Lancaster. Here's what things are going on now. This afternoon at 1 is the Festival String Quartet out at Olivedale. At 1.30, matinee at the mall. The Shazbots will be at the River Valley Mall. At 2 o'clock, the Festival Woodwind Quintet will be up in Amanda at the Fairfield County District Library. And then tonight at 5.30, happy hour will be string therapy at the Ale House 1890. That's tonight at 5.30. Let's look ahead to 8 o'clock tonight, too. It's the Chamber Music Classics. Generations Trio will be up at First United Methodist Church. I've been to that many times. That is a, is a great concert, so I'd encourage you to go to that. Let's look tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Major Arts for Minors, Photography for, for You at the Decorative Arts Center. 10.30, Children's Corner. Be Drew Murray Magic, and he'll be at the KSC Hall. At noon, as we were mentioned earlier, the Lancaster High School Percussion Ensemble we at Zane Square Concert Stage. All that's coming up here. So again, thanks for watching and being involved at Lancaster Festival Live. We'll be here all week, which will be now only Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll be here at noon each day. And you can watch all of these programs live as we do them at noon or on replay right here on Spectrum Cable Channel 1021 or by going to our Interphase Video Facebook page and click on the live link. For all of us at Interphase Video and our guests today, thank you for joining us on Lancaster Festival Live. Fairfield Federal, in cooperation with Interphase Video, presents the Lancaster Festival, live from downtown Lancaster. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan makes it easy to take control of your personal finances and build your wealth. You can access your accounts 24-7 with online banking, bill paying, and debit MasterCard. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, checking, savings, and home loans, online and on the go. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Also brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, Walker Shoe Center, Buckeye Lake Marina, South Central Power, the Fairfield County Parks, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, Dagger Johnston, Miller Ogilvy and Hampson, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Ohio University Lancaster, The Frame Shop, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.